Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll take a close look at the role of metformin in treating weight gain associated with second-generation antipsychotic treatment in youth. This is a timely report as second-generation antipsychotics are the first-line pharmacotherapy in youth for psychosis, bipolar disorder, treatment-resistant depression, irritability and aggression in autism spectrum disorder, conduct disorders not sufficiently responsive to behavioral interventions, and other off-label conditions. There continues to be a striking increase in second-generation antipsychotic prescriptions with youth being treated with these medicines for longer periods of time. These medicines are often associated with significant weight gain that is greater in youth than in adults and increases the risk for diabetes and other metabolic disorders. Childhood obesity is already a major public health problem of epidemic proportion, and these children have increased risk for cardiovascular, metabolic, and behavioral disorders. So it's clearly critical to identify strategies to combat this epidemic and reduce the risk of second-generation antipsychotic-associated weight gain. Of course, diet and exercise is critically important, and whenever I prescribe these agents, I proactively advise patients and their parents how important it is to have an exercise regimen and good diet and nutrition, given the risk of significant weight gain with the second-generation antipsychotics. Exercise and healthy diet are also associated with enhanced mental health, so this is a win-win strategy. That being said, in spite of this, significant weight gain still remains a risk in youth treated with second-generation antipsychotics, so additional treatment strategies are necessary. Metformin is attractive in this regard as it's widely used to treat type 2 diabetes and known to suppress appetite, increase insulin sensitivity, and decrease glucose production and absorption. Studies in adults have found metformin to be effective and safe in treating antipsychotic-associated weight gain and metabolic abnormalities, but there have been very few studies in children and adolescents. Mansuri and colleagues conducted a comprehensive and systematic review of randomized controlled trials examining the role of metformin in treating weight gain associated with second-generation antipsychotic treatment in youth. And this is actually the first meta-analysis focused on the safety and effectiveness of metformin for weight gain in youth treated with second-generation antipsychotics. So what did they find? Most encouraging was the randomized controlled trials they examined showed that by only 12 to 16 weeks after starting metformin treatment, there was a five-pound reduction in weight compared to placebo. There was also a significant reduction in body mass index or BMI, and insulin resistance. There was even more reduction in body weight and BMI at 24 weeks follow-up. Metformin also appeared to help with behavioral symptom relief as youth treated with metformin had reduced aggression and hostility. There appeared to be improvement in cholesterol, LDL, HDL, glucose, and insulin level, although these weren't statistically significant, which may reflect the small sample size and paucity of randomized controlled trials in youth. It's also important to note that metformin was associated with significantly more adverse events than placebo, specifically an almost fourfold higher rate of nausea and vomiting and three times higher diarrhea rate than placebo. Most of the side effects seen with metformin were not serious, and there was good patient adherence to metformin treatment and discontinuation rates did not differ significantly between metformin and placebo groups. Most of the side effects were GI side effects, which can be reduced using extended release formulation that has fewer side effects, as well as taking it with a meal and not on an empty stomach. It's also important to note that psychosis itself, independent of second-generation antipsychotic use, may contribute to metabolic syndrome. So these results are promising and highly clinically relevant and a good lead, but not yet ready for prime time. The overall sample remains small with only four randomized controlled studies in this analysis. 
The dose and duration of metformin treatment differed across all of the trials. Inclusion criteria for weight gain were different across studies. And in some studies, metformin was used to prevent weight loss, while others used it as a treatment of weight gain. In two of the four studies, a fixed dose of metformin was given instead of titrating the dose. That could obviously have led to more side effects or decreased efficacy as flexible dose titration is what we do in clinical practice to maximize efficacy and minimize toxicity. The authors correctly note that their findings are encouraging and should be considered promising to lead the way forward for future clinical trials to examine long-term outcome, determine optimal dosing strategies, impact on psychiatric symptoms, the length of therapy needed, metformin as a preventive and or treatment strategy, and how to individualize treatment with metformin in patients treated with antipsychotic medication.